Yo, what up guys? All right, just gonna make a quick little update of what's going on in the garage right now. Um, I kinda didn't make a video since my uh, control arm one. I made another one, but it was like 20 minutes and it just it was just rambling. So um, I thought I'd make this video uh, since I've accomplished a few things and I just wanted to show you what we got going on. So uh, we made the body cart. So what we got going on here is so this back half is going to be the section that goes under the trunk space area. Uh, it's not yet finished because we want to set the main body onto this one. So this one is sideways. So it'll go under the car like so. Um, so we made these so they would fit where the frame rails go up into the body. So basically this is where the body mount will sit on top of. Uh, we may need to contour it a little bit once we get the body up to, for it to sit nice and flush. Um, but I got these heavy duty ass casters. These are like 500 pounds a piece casters. Um, and they all swivel and they all have locks. And this thing moves so smoothly it'll move nice and easy i think when uh, it's all put on put uh, put under the car um it's not quite finished just like the back half we're not going to finish it a hundred percent until we get the body set down on it um, and then we'll put a couple braces across it inside there because we just want to make sure we get it set on there to fit the contour of the floor so i don't want to put some braces in there and then all of a sudden we got to take one out because it's hitting the floor. So once we set the body down on it, we're going to brace it a couple ways this way. Um, and these, the way we got this set up, it looks kind of weird, but um, the four by fours are sitting directly in the center of those casters. So all the weight is on top of the caster. And then we just kind of screwed these two by fours around there because the, the mounting plate was just a little too big. Um, we, thought of a couple different ways we could do it but this actually seemed to work the best so the whole weight is on the top of that caster where it should be and then these are all uh screwed onto that four by four and then the caster is screwed to the four by fours or two by fours sorry um so the casters are actually bolted to these four by fours with these massive freaking five inch long like lag bolts that we used so this thing's really fucking sturdy um these are what you call ldls so they'll actually use like these for the framing structure of a house so those things are supposed to support crap tons of weight um these things are heavy <laughs> they're very heavy so the plan here is to get the body the main body set down on this one and then we'll situate this one underneath the back half of the car. And then we're going to do some measurements. We're going to cut the legs to the length, then mount the casters. And then we're going to screw these two together with just a few two by fours, you know, brace them together. That way it all moves as one. Um, so that's the plan with that. Uh, and I think it's going to work out pretty well. Um, so far, so far it was pretty simple to build i'm not i'm not gonna lie there's it, god how much i probably got like over 350 dollars and just wood here for building this so i didn't want to do what we did last time which was uh put everything on you know the king studs like i built the or they like three two by fours all screwed together and then we put them on cinder blocks i didn't want to do that this time i wanted the body to be mobile because honestly, I, I kind of want to take it from here and swing it up against my garage over here. So hopefully we got enough room to do that and still work on the frame. So, okay, that's, uh, that's the body cart. Let's jump into a couple other things we got going. Yo, what up guys? So, uh, working on some of this uh, frame stiffening um, and I just kind of wanted to show what my idea was for this rear brace so most people will stick that rear brace uh, right here so if you see where I'm at on the frame 
here's the lower control arm they'll stick that rear brace right up here and then it runs to the other side so what I want to do is stick it up in this spot I don't know if I can show you one handed or not but... so this is my plans Let's see if I can do this so just like so so right over the rear the differential and it can I can get it up, sucked up in here and honestly if you if I had the bump stop if I had the bump stop in here this thing would be up higher than the bump stop so I think this is gonna work out pretty well and then like I said it's a little hard to balance with one hand but and then see the two spots that I have kind of ground clear so that's where I'm gonna weld it uh, I want to get this tacked in here before I pull the body off and then same with uh, a couple spots back here I got this spot ground and then the conjoining one on the other side so I'm just gonna run a straight bar across the back and then I'll eventually tie in I'm gonna put another bar up in here somewhere and then I'll tie those together with like a couple uh, gussets but uh I got rid of, I'm going to cut these off, these uh, little frame supports that go right here, and then I'll build my own little gusset that goes from the back housing to the frame over here. Um, and then I'm going to buy a BMR. BMR sells uh, the link that connects the two lower control arms. So I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. There's like a link that you can buy that goes here. Well, BMR sells one that actually goes straight up because like, like UMI and all the other ones, they kind of curve and then they're adjustable. BMR sells one that goes straight up into that mount. So that's the one I want to run. Uh, I think it's going to clear my tube that I want to do here best. So uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to throw this part in uh, so you have an idea of the kind of brace I'm going to do. I'm going to tack this in later today, and then uh, I'll try to sh put another little video of it. Um, I got to make another one though, because we uh, we got a little <laughs> we got a little ambitious and we split the tube. So, and he even asked me. He's like, "You want me to go a little further?" And I was like, "I'll oh, just give it one more bump," and that would just immediately split the tube so we must have waited too long you know because as it stretches it gets warm so maybe we waited a little bit too long to stretch it one more time and it just got cold and split or it was just too much this side worked out perfectly so it's too bad because this tube actually fits exactly the fucking way i want it to except it's split up there and it's not really uh wise to weld that that would be stupid so uh, i'm just going to get another tube here in a little while and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and bend up another one exactly the way this one is except for the split and uh, I'll get it put in so all right guys all right so as you saw I built that uh, cross member tube uh, but we broke it so we got another one made uh, this one's not split not split at all um, almost identical to the other one um, I think I, I had them kind of not these aren't quite as an upward angle because um, I felt like once I fit that other one that if I didn't have them quite so upward then it would probably fit a little better. We'll see though. I haven't trimmed this one to fit yet. I haven't had a chance to, to trim it down and get that done. So as far as metal what we got going on for the frame right now are uh, I got five sticks of these. So I probably went a little overboard on what I needed for this. Um, these are inch and a half 11 gauge DOM tubes. So uh, the wall thickness is 11 gauge, so it's just a hair under eighth inch thick. Um, probably don't need that for my cross support structures. Um, I should have thought about that and saved a little money. Um, I wanted the DOM just so we could bend this because it's seamless basically um, and I didn't want to split a seam even though we still split this but whatever um, spent a lot of money at the metal our local metal place the other day and maybe maybe $150 more than I should have um, let's just 
say that this metal sheet alone, so this is quarter inch thick steel. Um, and that's a five by five sheet of it. Uh, it was alone about $150. So the way I look at it is UMI and Spone and all those guys, I think they sell their notch kits for anywhere from 100 to 130, 120 to 130 bucks, I think. So I just got a whole sheet of steel for 10, 15 bucks more. So not too overly worried about it. Um, I'm going to make my notch a little differently than what they sell anyway. I'm going deeper. I'm going to be going past the seam uh, that, you know, most people say don't do that. But like I've said before, I'm going to do it. I'm going past the seam on this one. So I wanted to make sure I got some thick steel to put in place of that. So regardless, the if you know what I'm talking about, when you notch the frame, so you'll, you'll notch it back here. And then that kit, actually where I have that red, yellow line, uh, that kit comes with the block off plate that goes into the frame. Um, so even if I would have bought that kit, it wouldn't have been as big as I wanted it to be. So um, got our own steel. I'm actually going to use this as well to, uh, I might do a little more frame bracing um, here and there. And then where I'm cutting out the, the braces that run across over here, you know, those just flat bars they have the, from factory. I'm probably going to make some triangle, some little triangle gussets um, like some of you guys do. You kind of weld those to those supports. Well, I'm going to actually make my own gussets out of this um, just because, you know, obviously I have the steel. And then at the ends of my tubes, maybe I, I, I've seen other people do this and I, it seems like a good idea. It gives you a nice strong area for these tubes to attach to. I'm actually going to make little squares out of this that my tube they'll all weld the squares to the frame where the tubes will be welded to so the squares will be welded to the frame and then the tubes will be welded to the squares so if that makes sense that's my plan right now um we're going to do that with all these supports that go to the frame obviously the tubes that uh go to each tube i'm not going to do that but Every area where a tube is welded to the frame, I'm going to make a little square patch so that basically you're, what do you got, 3 16 steel that's on the frame. So you have 3 16 plus this quarter inch all welded to the tube. I think that's going to make for a nice rigid chassis, a good solid mounting point. Um, and that's just what I want to do. So I got some more sticks over there. I think I got like four more sticks to this shit over there. And like I said, went a little overboard. Probably didn't need four, five sticks of DOM. I needed one more of them to make this. And then the rest of them were just going to be flat. Um, so I probably didn't need that. So if you're going to do this, you don't need to spend as much money as I did. I just kind of made a mistake and thought about it afterwards. So, uh, I'm going to jump right into this part. So we got that shit out of the way. We are gonna we got all the steel for that. Um, I ordered all of my coilovers yesterday from UMI. So if you're watching this video and you've been saving money and you're going to order some stuff from UMI, they are not running uh, a 4th of July sale right now. They don't have 10% off or anything. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I did was uh, I emailed them customer service and I asked them about their sale and they actually responded with, yeah, we're not running our sale due to what's going on and our limited staff and we're behind in orders, but here's a one-time offer code for 10% off. So they actually sent me a code for 10% off because they weren't running a sale. So if you're interested in buying stuff, I don't know if they're open today, uh, maybe go ahead and email them and see if they'll extend the same offer. Um, this was yesterday that I did that. So I got... $1,300 worth of coilovers coming my way now. Uh, so excited for that. I've been wanting coilovers for this car forever. So that was about $1,300. Um, front and rear coilovers. Um, I ordered spanner wrenches. I ordered all the thrust bearings uh, for the coilovers. Those are... I, I wanted... I don't like how stiff this suspension is. So I'm hoping that the, the spring rates I ordered will kind of loosen it up a little bit, especially because 
This is mostly going to be a drag car. I mean, it's a driver, but it's also mostly going to be a drag style car. So I want I went with a 110 spring in the back and a 350 in the front. Just because I went with 350 in the front because this thing does have aluminum bumpers, alu or not aluminum, fiberglass bumpers, front and rear. It's got a fiberglass hood and it's going to have aluminum headed small block. So, and it's got all the coil, you know, it's got the tubular suspension on it coming. Um, so I felt like that was probably the appropriate uh, spring rates for the front. Um, Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I should have called, but I just kind of did my own research and that's kind of what I determined would be best for me and my application. So I might be biting myself in the ass of that because I do plan on putting the AC in this now and that AC compressor and all the components, it might actually add some weight, it might actually add up to, you know, what the hood and bumper would have weighed. So I probably should have went a little heavier, but we'll find out. We'll see. Um, ordering springs ain't, isn't that bad. I can rock them for a while, and if I really do get sick of it, we can do it that way. Um, so anyway, call UMI. If you got stuff you need to order, uh, contact them, whatever. Maybe they'll extend the same discount. Um, don't quote me on that. That's just my experience with them yesterday. So uh, if you all do, good luck. Um, and let's throw another update at you real quick. All right, so the other update I got for you is I went ahead and tore the entire dash harness out of this car. So all the fucking wiring is out of this thing, except for those few wires you see over there, which is actually a separate harness for the interior lights. Um, it, there's not many wires there. There's only like maybe five or six. Um, but I've traced all those, so I know where those all go. Um, so I got the whole harness out of the car. Um, here it is. So, kind of give you a quick rundown. Um, my interior lights have never worked in here. Well, they worked before I, I did a bunch of work in there and put the new headliner in and stuff. Um, I, I know why it doesn't work. Uh, the headline, the headliner, the dome light grounds out the circuit and I've never had that hooked up. Um, so I want to get that hooked up. And plus, if you have a Regal, you know that this cool regal emblem there on the dash when the lights are on like when you turn on your headlights that thing lights up and it's really cool so that's what these bulbs are those go to that so this is the section of the harness that runs to the passenger side um so we just got like a key ignition uh, a couple you know like a dash light i labeled a bunch of shit uh cigarette lighter so this is going to be a a grounded power so you push in the cigarette lighter and then this that grounds itself so then this thing supplies power and heats up the cigarette lighter um, same thing you know we got the glove box light um, like I said this just runs to that side the yellow wire or the pink and black wires are all just ignition so you should get power to those when the ignition comes on um, we got just a cluster of grounds. So this thing had a lot more wires in it running to that side. A lot of it was computer, uh, computer crap. So we went ahead and just deleted all that stuff. 90% of the computer stuff was just unplugged stuff anyway. And the car started and drove and ran and did what it was supposed to do before. So all I've eliminated is computer things. Things were that were not hooked up. Um, these cars had a horrible computer control, computer control system in them and just, it's pointless. So all this is ignition. All of this uh, went to the steering column or in that general area. I have everything labeled to where it went. Uh, I got the whole harness separated. So I'm just, I've been kind of just in the middle of, uh, you know, tracing wires and figuring out what goes where. <clears throat> the honestly the the most confusing thing I ran into was this car has two different plugins uh, two different pressure switches I should say that go to the brake pedal and it was hard I was trying to figure out which ones were actually the brake lights because it's got one switch up top and then one switch that's lower 
and the one up top looks like it has a vacuum line and um, a couple wires that go to it so i assumed that that was probably something to do with the cruise control um which it, yes that's what it turned out to be basically um and then just tracing wires i found that this one here now this may be different in your car i don't know uh, this one here was tracing wires the one with the orange white and blue one wires this is actually the brake lights so this actually goes to the brake light harness so that was that was comforting to find out so i've i still have um the other ones which this doesn't even go to anything. I've traced the whole damn thing and it goes to an ignition power and then it went to a, a harness plug-in that wasn't even plugged in. So, yeah. Um, yeah, basically, I found it. There's my brake lights. So, uh, definitely a little nerve-wracking doing all this, cutting wires out, you know. Um, basically, if I were to give any advice to anybody about doing this, especially if you don't know how to read a diagram or if you don't have any idea what the hell you're doing with wiring, if it's just over your head, this is all ignition stuff. All this goes to the switch ignition, except for this, whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to get into detail with that. Uh, you can see everything that has ignition on it. Ignition, ignition, ignition. All these wires right here basically went to the column. So all these went to a column switch or actually came down through the column and they go to a big bulkhead connector, a couple of them, that actually tie into the ignition switch, the key switch. Don't touch those. Just stay away from them. Don't go cutting wires off of those. Uh, trace where they go and if you can really determine that they went somewhere that didn't go to some plug-in connector that has never been hooked up you know then maybe go ahead and chop it off but i'm just i'm doing clearing out the other stuff in the harness before i get to this stuff because this is really going to take some time to really look through i don't really think there's anything i should cut through here i think all of this actually goes straight to the fuse panel and then just goes to a fuse somewhere um so I shouldn't need to, to do any trimming of that, and I really don't want to. I want to make sure that obviously that when I go start the car, the car starts. So there's a couple things on there I've, I, I can't figure out what are, um, as far as like uh, switches and things on the column. Um, and I've been looking up diagrams and I found a few on like G-Body forums, but um, they're really crappy. Like you can't hardly read them when you zoom in on the picture or anything. So I've been doing my best. It's, it's kind of be you can kind of figure out what things say, but they're just, they're not the greatest pictures of them. Um, so, you know, do your own research, look up your own stuff. I tried looking up to see if like Haynes and Chilton manuals had anything like this and basically just reading on forums people say that they're pointless and the wiring diagrams in them are not very good or something i don't know i think people even said they didn't even have the diagrams in them so i just got on gbody forums and i found a few diagrams that i downloaded so follow my route do what you want or you know figure it if you got access to things like that that's awesome maybe put that information out there for other people that'd be great um but yep we're just trying to do a few things here and there I want to try to get this at least finished up before I dive into everything else because I don't really want to be inside the car when it's on top of my stand. So uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, I think this coming week I'm going to tackle this a little bit more. I got to tack in my tubes. And once I tack in my few brace tubes that I want inside the car, you know, on the car before we take the body off, then. Uh, I'll uh, probably go ahead and start working on this again. Um, I don't want to wait, you know, six months to dive back into the wiring harness. So uh, I want to get this finished up. I shouldn't have started it, but I was honestly, I was bored <laughs> and wanted to do something. So uh, there we go. Harness is tore apart. Uh, car stands built. We got all of our metal for the frame. Um, body is super close to coming off 
Uh, maybe my next video, I'll probably, you know, weld in some tubes in my next update. And then uh, uh, hopefully in the next week or two, we'll be picking up this body and testing out our new body cart. And hopefully I don't have to show you anything horrible that happened. So, <laughs> all right, guys, later.